Hello everyone, welcome back to Parser Games. In today's episode, I'll be showing you how to store names and letters in cloud variables. Now this is going to be a bit tricky because we actually cannot store any letters in cloud variables. You've probably already seen that and that's why you're watching this video. And what we're going to have to do is we actually need to convert our variable into numbers, upload that, and then whenever we want to see that variable, we're going to have to download it again and decode it. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to make a new sprite which is just for encoding, decoding and uploading and all that. We can just call it cloud manager. You can call it whatever you want but I'm going to call it that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make a new block which is in my blocks. And we're going to call it encode spacebar and then add an input in here and just enter word for example and now this is going to make this new block for us which we can then customize what this block is going to do and then we can use this in other parts of our script which is pretty handy because then you don't always have to copy uh, whatever is going to be down here in here instead you can just use this as a sort of as a shortcut so now what we're going to do is we're going to add a new list called alphabet and the reason we're going to need this is we're going to have to store our letters and the corresponding numbers to those letters. So for example, uh, if we have the number 10, that's going to be A. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to right click this, import. And I've already prepared this text file here, which you can also find in the description. You can just download this text file or you can make your own if you want to. And in this, the first nine letters are empty because we can't use those because those only have one uh, one digit and we're always going to use a, a double digit code but then a is 10 b is 11 and so on and i've added most of the characters you could want so plus minus all that stuff and now what we're going to do is we're going to program the encoding so we're going to take the word that's being given and we're going to make a new variable called encode count and we're going to set encode count to 1 at the beginning of encoding. And then we're going to repeat until encode count is higher than the length of the word we're encoding. So this way every we're going to look at every letter of our word and going to we're going to encode it by itself. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add another variable called encode temp which stands for temporary. And we're going to set this not to zero, but to empty at the beginning. So make sure you actually select this and just remove anything that's in here so that it's completely empty. Now for every letter of our word, we're going to change encode temp. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to join what we've already had in encode temp, which in the beginning is going to be nothing because it's empty. And join that with item number of letter encode count of our word so this way for example when an encode count is one and a word is apple or something then this letter is going to be a see letter one of the word is going to be a then it's going to look into this list where is a oh a is right here 10 so it's going to join nothing with 10 so encode count is going to become 10 and now the next time it's going to be 10 and whichever number P has, which is 25. So it's going to be 10, 25 and so on. And that way we're going to encode our word. And now what we need to add is that we actually have to increase our encode count by one every time we've actually encoded a letter. If not, we're just going to keep encoding the same uh, letter over and over again, the first letter. Make sure this is set encode, not change encode, because that's gonna give you a problem. So set encode to one. I accidentally chose change instead of set, but I meant set. And now we're gonna test it out by encoding apple. So this is encoded apple 10 is A, then there's two P's, so 25, 25. I guess 21 is L, and then 14 is E. Yep. And now this is the encoded word already. So now we've converted our word into an encoded 
number which we can then decode and now we're going to program the decoding so we're going to make another block called decode spacebar add an input called code and now this is going to work pretty similarly so at the beginning we're going to set decode count which is a new variable going to set that to one and we're going to set decode temp which is also a new variable to empty and now we're going to repeat until repeat until decode count is larger than the length of our encoded word So as you can see, it's basically the same thing, just going the other way around. So we can set our decode temp to join decode temp with, with item letter decode count of our code. And now what's important is that every two numbers is one letter because one zero stands for an A. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add join and we're gonna join the thing we've already done with this, which is gonna join always the, the first and the second letter, for example. So one and 10 becomes, uh, one and zero becomes 10, which is an eight. So add that. And now we need to actually change our decode count by two every time. Because if we start on the one, that's 10. So one zero becomes 10 and that gets decoded to eight. And then we need to jump forward to one, two, so that it becomes two and five, which is a P. One, two, two and five, which is a P and so on. So now we've already encoded our word apple, which is now encoded into encode temp and what we're going to do now is we're going to try to decode this encoded word so we're going to decode encode temp and the result is that encode temp has been decoded back into apple so now our encoding and decoding works and now as you can already see we've actually uh, converted our word which we wanted to save into a number and this number can just be uploaded as a cloud variable. So what we're going to do now is whenever we have a new high score here, and this is just for my example, you can just do whatever you want in any context you're using this, but this is just my example. We're going to send out high score when a new high score is reached and we're going to add a new cloud variable called username. And this is gonna save our, wait, I'm just gonna hide some of these variables because there's a lot of them and they're kind of annoying. That's better. And now we're gonna, in this username cloud variable, we're gonna save the name of the person with the highest score. So the way we're gonna do that is when I receive high score, we're gonna encode the username of the user who is currently using the project and this only works if you're logged in, then it can detect your username. So we're gonna encode that, which is right here, 25, 10, so on, so on, so on. That's pretty long, but I mean, my username is pretty long, so it makes sense. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the cloud variable username to our encoded word. Let's try that out. Now the username has been changed. And of course, if you're playing the game, you don't want to read this because you don't really, you don't understand what this means. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a local variable, which is going to show us the high score as well as the name of the user. So we're going to call it high score information. And what we're going to do is that when the flag is clicked, it's going to repeat forever. Set. High score information too. And now we're going to do some stuff, which is we're going to join the current high score. And we're going to add in a little weight because if not, this is going to make our project lag a little bit. 
we're gonna join high score with for example a minus or I like to use this this little line but you can just do whatever you want and then we're gonna join it with decode temp and before that we're always gonna decode the current username the encoded username of the current high score holder so what this is gonna do is it's gonna always set the high score information to the current high score joined with this so that there's a little separation we can also add a spacebar before and after that and then the decoded username of the top user so if we start this you can see high score information 51 parsec games that's my username and now if we keep clicking it the high score just went up and as you can see the high score information is going up as well and now if a different user were to use this then their name would appear so what we're going to do now is just for the sake of showing that it works we're going to pretend there's a new user called user1 restart the project and now as you can see the high score is still over here save to project games but our name is now user1 going to click and the high score stays because we're not yet over the high score but i'm going to click uh 62 times so that user1 gets the new high score so now we've beat Parsec Games, we have the high score of 63, and our username has also been saved. And that's how it works. So now we're able to save words in the cloud. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, if you did please leave a like and make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.